on, everybody. Let's give God a bigger shout of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, who's ready to make room for God to move this morning? Come on, who's believing that God is about to shake some grounds this morning? Come on. Let's believe that some walls will break down or come down this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Tell the person next to you, you look great this morning. All right, all right. Look at that. Amazing. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing? Good. So good. Welcome to the last installment of Secret Recipe. Hey, how good was last week? So good, right? Pastor Roy. So good. Last week, Pastor Roy talked about us keep the dessert. You know, how we overcome the bondage of bad habit and not actually letting it um, steal our destiny. Now today, I want to close up the series by talking about stick to the recipe. Okay, everybody say stick to the recipe. We're going to stick to the recipe. Oh, come on somebody. Help me preach this morning. Come on, I want to hear more this morning. Stick to the recipe, okay? Now, and today we're also going to do some baking as well, all right? You know, church, let's look at this beautiful cake. Over here right now, we have this amazing looking, beauty, delicious cake in here. You know, that, that, that is, wow, looking so amazing, looking like a proper wedding cake. And this is made by our very own dairy, okay? Can somebody give her an appreciation? She spent eight hours just doing this, you know, making this just for our preaching illustration. So what I was told is on the top layer here, it is the amazing, delicious strawberry chocolate cake, okay? And on the bottom here is probably one of my favorites, and I believe we are all going to eat this cake in heaven. It's the famous red velvet cake. How many of you love the red velvet cake? And, and here, look at all this, this beautiful decoration on top and all the frosty icing as well. Eight hours effort just for this. Come on, somebody. Don't worry. We're going to cut it up. So that's why you don't go home. We're going to cut it up after the service at the Newcomer's Welcome Party. And let's eat this together. Come on, who's ready for one piece of this? So good. Now, and, and, and here, on the, the and, and, and you know what? This, this cake actually represents our life. Look at this cake. How beautiful is this? This cake actually represents our life. All right? Okay. <laughs> that is so hard. Well, this cake represents our life. And today, we're going to use this as an illustration. And in this scenario, this cake is, represents our life. And today, like I will be representing God, the masterpiece. The masterpiece, uh, the master, master chef, the masterpiece, the master chef, okay? God, the master chef, has designed your life with His own hands. Look at this. God designed it with His, his own hands. Tell your neighbor that you are handmade by God. You are handmade by God. In fact, the Bible actually says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. That means you are His masterpiece. You know, God has designed you to be like this. He is so proud of you, His own creation. He wants to show you off like this. Put you on a, on a stand so high, so tall, so excellent for the whole world to see. Come on, somebody. Who wants to be like this cake? All right. That is gra God's grand design for you. Do you believe that this morning? And now on the other hand, here we have, you have guessed it, it is all the ingredients. This is all the ingredients that you will need to make that beautiful cake right there. You know, probably you, now you are saying to your life, I want to be that, like, that cake pastor, but how come my life is still looking like this? It's all misfit, misplaced. It's I'm still look, looking like a mess altogether. How can I get from here to over there? You know, pastor, maybe you're looking at your life right now and say, I want to be like this. Who doesn't want to have a life like this? I want to have a life like this, a life that is so excellent. I want, to, I want to have a life, who doesn't want to have a life that is so blessed? I want to be so blessed like her, so successful like her, so talented like her. But if when I look at my life right now, it's still looking like this, just plain flour, just plain sugar. My life is still like a pack of eggs. What good can possibly come out of this? How can it possibly turn this to over there? 
But you know what church, one thing I want to tell you this morning, I have good news for you. Because this is God's will for you. This is God's plan. This is God's design for you. Because He did not create your life to be a mess. He did not die for you so that you can stay like this, uh, like a mess in your life. But God has called you to freedom. He has called you to purpose. He has called you to victory. He has called you for greatness today. Oh, I wish somebody that you just heard what I just said. Because you are anointed. You are chosen. You are Bless you are strong and courageous. God says you are chosen to be the head and not the tail. And I died for the cross so that you can live an abundant and a victorious life. Come on, somebody. But how, Pastor? That's why today we're going to talk about a message called Stick to the Recipe. Come on, touch five people next to you and say, Stick to the Recipe. Tell your other neighbors, Stick to the Recipe. So this morning, I want to share three things on how to get from here to here. How are we going to get from here to here? So here's the secret recipe. The three things that you need to do to stick to the recipe this morning. Number one is you got to use the right ingredients. Number two, follow the right order. And number three, you got to stick to the process. Okay, are you ready this morning? Let's go. Let's go through what is the first thing that we need to do to get from here to here. Number one is you got to use the right ingredients. This recipe, I have a recipe printed here if you want a recipe later, everybody. All the ladies, the one who bakes at home, not me, all right? So I have a recipe in here. This recipe tells me exactly what ingredients you need to make this right to the exact proportion. How much you need for every single ingredient. You got to measure it up accordingly. But one small change on the ingredients will lead to will produce a different result. Just one small change of that, it will lead to a different result, an end result. I remember a story. There was one time. Okay, this is a story about my mother-in-law. I really hope she's not watching this live stream, all right? So, there's one time. My mother-in-law, with all the best intention in the world, and she says, I'm going to cook dinner tonight. Okay, I'm going to cook dinner tonight. To give you some perspective, uh, my mother-in-law, she's a doctor. All her life, she's a pathologist. She, she heads the whole laboratory, the whole labs, the pathology section. So she's, re she's really good with needles. She knows her stuff. But when it comes to kitchen, no comment. I'll leave it there, okay? No comment. So she says, I, I want to cook dinner for everybody tonight. And, and, and I feel like eating this tamarind sour soup. In Indonesia, we call it sayur asam. This. So in, uh, it's the Indonesian version of tom yam soup. This kind of sour and, and spicy, sour, mostly sour, sour soup. That's what we call it. In Filo, you call it sinigang. Yeah, there you go. You call it sinigang in Filo. So, so she said, I'm going to cook this. I feel like eating this, you know. Let's cook this. And we tried to stop her. With all kinds of ways. And we're like, don't worry, we'll cook. It's okay, we'll, we'll cook for you. Don't worry, just relax and sit down. We'll order takeaway. What do you want to eat? You want to eat Thai? You want to eat Vietnamese? We'll order it for you. But she insisted. And she says, just leave it to me. I got this. Okay. So we step back. And, and she's trying to cook all the veggies that you need for the soup. We got all that. But there is one ingredient that we did not have at home at that time. And it's the tamarind. What's tamarind soup without the tamarind? There you go, right? But then my mom came up with a brilliant idea. She said, she thought to herself, just relax. What does tamarind do? It makes the, the soup sour, right? So if I can just find something that probably another ingredient that looks different, but have similar taste, we should be okay, right? To replace that. So she looked to the fridge and she finds something, trying to find something that is sour. And she saw a pineapple. Here we go. Her logic says pineapple is sour, tamarind is sour. So if I put pineapple into the soup, it should make the soup sour. Aha, uh -huh. problem solved. Brilliant. You know what? My God. When we were that whole night, the whole family was laughing the whole night because we were so confused. Is this supposed to be a soup or a fruit salad 
or pickles, we have no idea. Come on, somebody. Legend says that she never comes close to the kitchen anymore. But I love you, ma'am. We love you so much, but let us cook, okay? The moral of the story is use the right ingredients. Just stick to the recipe. Come on, somebody. Same thing with our lives. So many times we want the same end result. We want a life that is blessed, a life that is full of joy, full of peace in our life. But, 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 but I've, never, I've never met someone that says, I want to be broke. I want to uh, live a life that is depressed. I want to be full of debt. I want to be ugly for the rest of my life. No one wants to do that because everybody wants the same result. But oftentimes, the reason when we look at our end result, it is different from the cake. It is different from, from, it is different from what we expected. It's because we put our pineapple into the cake. I'm going somewhere. And we say, what happened, Pastor? This recipe is wrong. You know, we say, this recipe did not work at all. Uh, the Word of God did not work. You see, the recipe is never wrong. The Bible, the Word of God has been proven, has been tested for 2,000 years. It is alive, it is active, it is powerful, and never have I seen the righteous men and women of God forsaken in their life. But somewhere, somehow along the line, we grab our pineapple and we modified our recipe. Sometimes we think, oh, if I can just replace that one ingredient, it looks the same, uh, it should taste the same, it should achieve the same thing in the end. You know, when we try to replace Jesus with something else, when you try to replace Jesus with money, with career, with fame, with success, when we try to replace Jesus with other things, relationships that is not from God, you know, uh, drugs, alcohol, whatever that is. Let me tell you, every time when you try to replace Jesus with your pineapple, it will always lead to disappointment. You see this small thing called, where's the baking soda? Baking soda over here. Baking soda, so small, seems trivial, but it is potent to the making of the cake. You know, the recipe says here that you only need one tablespoon of this, one teaspoon actually, not even tablespoon, one teaspoon of this baking soda, so small, just one teaspoon into the cake mix. You know, but what happens when we say, ah, oh, it's just one teaspoon, what can one teaspoon possibly do to the cake? What can one teaspoon possibly make a difference on the cake? If I just choose not to put it in, I'm just going to skip it, not put it in, it shouldn't make much difference. But you know what church? Guess what? This baking soda, when you put it together into the mix of the cake, it releases this thing called carbon dioxide that rises and pushes the batter of the cake upwards. It's the thing that holds the whole cake mix together as we bake. It's the thing that gives the light, the soft, the fluffy texture of the cake. And you know what? How tall? This cake can be, it can be this tall, it can be that tall. It all depends on this one table teaspoon of baking soda. Come on, somebody. Without the baking soda, we will get and leave a flat cake, a cake that is tough in the texture that is not appetizing at all. But you know what, church? When you, this is the same thing in our life. When we try to remove the core ingredient of our life, when you try to remove Jesus, the Word of God, the godly community, the rightly people in your life, we think we could get away with it. We think we could do things our own way, but it doesn't work that way. When we try to remove Jesus from our life, you will live a flat, a dull, unfulfilled life. Because why? Because you will never rise to the full potential that God has called you to live. When you try to remove the Word of God, you remove God from the equation, you remove the people, the godly people in your life, you will never have the strength, the tenacity, the faith it takes to live the life that God wants you to live. Come on somebody, stop expecting from the world what God and only God can give you. Stop expecting from the world what only God can give you. Church, if you want to live a life that is to the fullness of the potential, to fullness of abundance that God wants you to live, use the right ingredients. Just stick to the recipe. All right, we're learning something today. Number two, what do we need to do to get from here to here to stick to the recipe? Number two is we've got to follow the right order. 
You got to follow the right order. Order matters. Okay? Maybe you got all the right ingredients. Maybe you started with all the right ingredients. You've got all the right ingredients. But how come the final product doesn't look like this? How come my final product did not look like this before? You know why, church? Perhaps you stick with the ingredients, but you don't follow the right order. Okay? Order matters. If you read this recipe here, there's an exact order that you have to follow. It's called steps. It's orders. You got to do this first, and then after that, you got to do that. The first thing, you got to sift together the flour, the baking powder, the cocoa powder. You, you sift them all together first, and after that, you're going to add the oil and sugar, and you're going to mix it all together until it's shiny, you know. It looks, it looks smooth and shiny. And after that, you got to put the eggs one at a time, and you mix it all together. After that, you put the flavoring here, and the vanilla flavor, and then you put the coloring here after that. And then the whisking with the, with the buttermilk and baking soda comes in the end. But if you put it in the wrong order, either the cake will not rise, or when you're over mixing it, it will leave become to become a flat and not a moist cake. The same thing with our life. There is a defined order that God has designed to be followed for our life. And every time we change the order, we will change the result. Every time we try to change the order, we will always change the result. So the order according to God, a priority order according to God is this. It's number one, is God. That God should be first in our life. Our relationship with God, you know, our personal walk with God, our, our time with God, that should be the priority, our personal. This is not a religion. I love that song. It says, we're going to break religion. This is not about religion. It's about personal relationship with God. That should come first. And myself, you, yourself should come first. We're not talking about living a self first, um, like a selfish life, but it's, I'm talking about a strong uh, my emotional health, my physical health, my spiritual health. Because why? You can't live a healthy family. You can't lead a healthy family if you are not a healthy mom or healthy dad. Okay? You can't lead strong. You can't dominate in marketplace if you don't have a strong mind. And after that comes our family. Remember, we always teach that our spouse, our husband and wife comes first and after that is our children. And then, it, and then our God's commission. That's the calling of God. God created us for a purpose, not just to success, not just to fill in the earth, but God calls you with a purpose to love people, to save souls, and to make disciples, to use whatever tools. And the last one is a career. It can be your vocation, your study, your passion. Everything that you do, they are only a tool. They are a tool for you to build people, to build your family, to build the kingdom of God, it's a tool for you to glorify God. But it's not the thing, the only thing that you live for. And so many times, we get all the order mixed up. You know, I believe, I remember in the Bible, in the Luke 14, this parable of the great banquet and feast. It says it's a story of a man. He was preparing a great feast and he sent out many invitations. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, come in everybody. The banquet is ready. There's a feast prepared for you. Come and eat. But they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and I must inspect that. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five pairs of oxen. Talking about, I've just got a business. I've just opened this. I've just opened that. I just, I, you know, I got a career promotion. I want to try them out. Please excuse me. And another say, I just got married. Come on, leave me alone. I'm on my honeymoon. I've got to build my family. You know, so I can't come. Please excuse me. You know what? You know what? First one talks about the piece of land. Talking about having a place to live. I'm still building my family. I want to build, a, have a land. Please build a house. The second one talks about having a livelihood, having a business, having a career. And the third one talks about someone who wants to have a wife. I want to build a family, my family of my own. Those three things are all really necessities in life. They are all necessary in life. So if you're asking a pastor, is there anything wrong on buying land? Is there anything wrong on buying a business? Is there anything wrong on having a wife getting married? No. There's absolutely nothing wrong about it. 
That's nothing. But in fact, it is God's will for you to inherit and have land. When God created human in the first one, Genesis 1, God says what? Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue the earth. You will dominate. Take dominion. The Bible says take dominion. Have dominion over every little thing on earth. Your success, your, your business, your career, your family, your relationship matters for God. Because those are the ways God blesses you. Come on, somebody. You know, He wants you to take dominion. He wants you to dominate in the marketplace, Pastor Michelle. He wants you to dominate in your workplace. He wants you to dominate in your school. He wants you to kill it in everything that you do. That you have a successful business, successful family, successful relationships. But when the order is mixed up, everything will start to fall apart. The order matters, okay? And in life, oftentimes we are faced with decisions, a crossroads where we have to choose between this or between that. And when the order is not clarified, should I go to church first or should I go to work first? Should I do double job or should I come to discipleship, commit myself? Should I tithe or should I not? There are lots of times we will have to make this kind of decisions. And these life decisions should be guided by a clear order of priority in our life. The order is important. In fact, we see so many marriages like actually fall apart because they swap their priority. They swap building their spouses and raising their godly kids with chasing money and thinking they can fulfill them and feed them with all the material possessions. Health fell apart. Because people chase, chase their career more than they, chase, they, they prioritize their own mental health in life. Anything that is not done in the right order will never be sustainable. Okay? It will never be sustainable. When our life priority is taking over kingdom priorities, that is when everything becomes messed up. And you say, why did my, my, I have worked so hard in my life. I have worked double job, triple job, but why is my relationships? Why did my marriage break up? And when we wonder why every time I take one step forward, or it is so hard in my life, but it seems like I keep taking more steps backwards in my life. Maybe because you've got the right ingredients, but you got the order wrong. The Bible in Haggai 1 says this, Let's read this together. Now, this is the what Lord Almighty says. Give careful thoughts to your ways. Read this carefully. You have planted much, but harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. Never happy, never fulfilled in life. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Leaks everywhere. I work so hard. No money in there. Only that. Where did all the saving go? Nowhere. This is where the Lord Almighty says, Be careful. Give careful thought to your ways. You expected much, but see, I turned it out to be little. What you brought home blew away. Why? Because of my house, which remains a ruin. While each of you is busy with your own house. Okay? When life priorities taking over kingdom priorities. When our own ambition overtakes God's purpose for us. When, when, when your hobby overtakes God. When you stop pursuing God's presence in efforts of pursuing career in our life. Come on church. All these life priorities, there's nothing wrong with that. Our family, our wealth, you know, you know all our ministry, our, our career should not be the hindrance to serve God. In fact, they should be the very reason we come to God. This should be the very reason why we surrender to God and put it onto God. Because what I notice is that those who leave everything in God's hands will eventually see God's hands in everything. Follow the right order. If you read that story of Haggai, it is not about provision. It is not about the issue of provision, but it's about the wrong order of priority in life. Because the Bible says that if you would seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. If you will first seek His righteousness, His word, His promise in your life, all these things will be added unto you. Proverbs 3, 6 says this, In everything you do, put God first. And He will direct you 
and He will crown your efforts with success. God wants to give you success. God wants to crown you success. Come on, somebody. But God says, will you just follow my order? Will you put me first? Will you trust me that I can bless you beyond what you can do on your own? Church, the order matters. If you want to live a life to the full purpose, to the full abundance of what God has created for you, follow the right order. Come on, somebody. Stick to the recipe. Are you ready this morning? Last one. Last but not least. I'm going to get the worship team up right now. I'm going to close with this. The last thing that we need to do is just stick to the process. Tell your neighbor, stick to the process. Stick to the process. You know, after you got all the right ingredients, you follow the right order on the dot, you get all the cake mix right. The recipe says here that you got to preheat it to 175 degrees. Put the oven up to 175 degrees, you know. And then after that, when you put everything in, you got to bake that for 25 minutes in the oven. 25 minutes in the oven. This talks about there's a process that all these ingredients need to go through in order to become a masterpiece like this. Okay? And oftentimes, if you look at it, the process requires the right temperature and the right time. The temperature, the heat, the pressure is needed to actually cook the mixture up, to cook it up to the full perfection. And it takes time. To reveal the two final product, to bake it, it needs time, enough time in the oven, 25 minutes to get a final product like this. You can't rush it. But some of us, we get into a bit of heat on life. Pressure, too much pressure coming into life. A bit of setbacks, a bit of disappointments in life. We crack, we pull out, we pull ourselves out from the oven. We are half cooked. God is saying to you today, I'm not done with you yet. I'm not done with you yet. You need to get back to the oven. Get back to the oven. You're not done. You're not done yet. But a lot of us say, no, no, no. I don't want to go to the oven. It's so hot. You know, I don't like it. It's, it's painful. I don't like it. But God says, you need it. Let me do some more work in you so that I can make you into a masterpiece like this. I need more time for me to do some work in you. You know, some of us gave up too soon. And we say, this battle, this journey just takes too long. It, it doesn't work, you know. Why, why, why is this LOF journey taking so long, so hard? Why do I have to be surrounded by people, faithful people like my connect group and stuff like that? And, and, and then we gave up too soon. But we never actually allow God to reveal the true masterpiece that is in us. And we say, it's taking too long. I, I want to see God's promise happening right now. But just like this cake, the recipe says it needs to be in the oven 25 minutes. We can pull it out in 15 minutes and say, it's done. It's ready to eat. Because not, it is still half cooked. Stick to the process. It's the pressure that reveals our true character. You know, it, it don't give up. Let pressure cook you to perfection. We need to stick to the process. Maybe some of you are saying, I want to come back to God. You know, I want to turn my life around. I'm sick and tired of this. I want to turn my life around. I want to commit myself. I want to get stronger. I want to get disciple. I want to live a set free life. Don't drop up just because it's inconvenient. Don't quit just because it's a bit too painful to face. You have to talk about things. You have to face things. Don't, don't quit just because it takes sacrifice. Yes, you got to put some work. We got to put work into it. But Hebrews 10, 30, 36 says this, you need to be what? To be patient in order to do the will of God and to receive what He promises. You know, I know it takes faith. I have faith. All of you, maybe we have faith that, hey, God has a plan for me to make this. God wants me to be like this cake. That's a, I, have a, I, I have faith that God can do great things in my life. But it is through faith and patience that we will get to receive the promise of God in our life. Amen? Why don't we all stand up? I'm going to close up. I'm going to pray for you.
God's about to turn some raw ingredients in this place into masterpiece. But maybe some of you have tried to modify your own recipe. You try to replace God with your pineapple and you think I can do it with my own way. You know, I can do it by myself. I can do it with my own way. I don't need God. Church, it's time to use the right ingredients. Today is a time to invite God back into your life. Maybe some of you, you thought, I've been, I thought I've been doing everything right in my life. I thought I'm a, I'm a good man. You're right. I thought I'm just trying to build a fa- healthy family life, a balanced lifestyle. I just want, I want to be successful in what I do. There's nothing wrong with that. It is what God wants you for you as well. But have we let our life priorities overtake kingdom priorities in our life? We have started to put God on the lowest and says, once I have done everything, I've achieved everything, I've achieved all my goals, I've paid off all my debt, I've paid all my mortgage, I once I have got married, after I, I've got that, then God, I will come to you and I will give you my time, I, I will serve, I will give and stuff like that. Church, when the order is mixed up, it is not sustainable and it will fall apart. It's time to put God first in everything that we do. And Bible says God will crown you. Every single effort that you put in will be successful. That's what the Bible says. And perhaps last but not least, some of you are in the heat of process. You are right in the painful journey, confusing journey that you are going through right now. And you are tempted to pull yourself out of the oven and say, I just want to give up this morning. I want to tell you this morning, just one word, patience, my friend. Persevere, patience. Maybe you're half cooked. Maybe you're halfway there. You're just five minutes, just 10 minutes away from, from, from being fully cooked. Let perseverance do its work on you. Come on, let patience take you to see God's final work fulfilled in your life. Just stick to the process. Come on somebody, who's ready to live a life full of abundance, full of purpose? full of potential to the God God has given in your life. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Every eyes closed, every hands lifted up. Every hands lifted up this morning. Let's lift our hands up as a sign of decision, as a sign of commitment, as a sign to, yes, God, I, I want to be filled. I want to be changed. I want to be transformed. I want to live a life that you will take me, you will design me, you will shape me, you will mold me to become a masterpiece. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. Father, you see every hands that is lifted up this morning. And we pray today, Lord God, that yes, maybe some of us are still half cooked. Some of us are still looking like a mess. Ingredients as misfit, Lord God, that is plain, that is dull in our life. But I know, Lord God, that you have a destiny for them to live a life full of abundance, a life that is victorious, Lord God, a life that is blessed, a life that is set free, Lord God, not in any bondage, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, right now, we're going to surrender our life into your hands, Lord God. We're going to invite you back in, Lord God. Be the main recipe, be the main ingredient in our life, Lord God. Father, we want to put you first in all that we do. And right now, we pray that you will give us the tenacity, the strength, Lord God, the courage, Lord God, to fight through, Lord God, fight through the heat, fight through the pressure, Lord God. And Father, we are believing, Lord God, that right now as we pray, Holy Spirit, you're doing some works. You're doing some groundworks in the hearts of people right now. Lives will be restored. Lives will be changed. Father, we're going to be believing right now that it's a miracle, it's a breakthrough in motion right now as we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Be blessed this morning. You're learning something this morning. Come on, why don't we worship together?